All right, everybody. So our previous video, we connected our Gatsby project to Netlify successfully. We had a few issues here and there, but overall we resolved them and we're back running full steam ahead. I'm gonna close Netlify for right now in terms of my Safari window. And I wanna come back to Gatsby. So I'm gonna do a Gatsby develop. And what we should get hopefully in here, come on, pull it up. You got this, is that I now wanna pull some data from Gatsby. And we're gonna do this all in GraphQL. Strap your seat belts in because at first glance, this can be overwhelming. So I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna control or command click on the Macintosh to look at localhost 8000. And up pops this window saying explore. Now yours may not have explore in it. Just FYI, yours might look like this. I'm gonna click on this little folder that says show graphical explorer. And what I wanna do is I wanna spend some time in GraphQL because this is really, really important to understand how we pull data out of our files. Now in GraphQL, there's two sides. There's the all side and then like the singular version. So all directory is directory, all file is file, all image sharp, all site, you're kind of seeing a trend for image sharp, site, site build metadata, all site build metadata. So in GraphQL, there's the alls and then like the singular version. I'm gonna focus right now on the all file. I just wanna pull some data. So if I click on all file and hit this little play icon or to execute the query, it's gonna bring in the edges, the node and the ID. Now what this is doing, if we go back into our Gatsby config, bring it in right here, that if you look at it, how the file is working is this Gatsby source file system says, show me all the files that are located in the directory of source and images. In this case, we have two files. We go to the source folder where we have the images, an example, and the gallery icon. Now, if we wanna know those file names, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down. And I'm gonna look for the word base. It's actually up, it's letter B. And if I drop it in and hit the actual play icon, and you notice now it says example.png and the Gatsby icon. What I'm also gonna do is pull the pretty size. This is gonna bring me the file size of these two files. You can see it's all working right here. If I have anything that goes wrong, let's just say I type like this random number string, it's gonna say error message. This is where I spend a lot of my time because if I can pull the data out of GraphQL, I know the data can then go into my Gatsby project. I'm gonna undo that just so it goes back to where it is. So now that we have GraphQL sitting right here and right here, let's now pull this into our Gatsby project. I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. I'll bring it right back. I'm gonna head over to VS Code. I'm gonna open my folders too. I should have done this a while ago, but you know what, what the heck. I'm just gonna say open folder. And what this will do is this will grab 179. And now I can see all of my folders that I'm working with right here. It did kind of close my windows, which is not a big deal at all. I'm gonna go right back to the source folder and then go to pages and go right into the index file. And now I have it right back where I wanted it before. Now what I'm gonna do here is I wanna bring in the information that I had located right here in this query. So what I'm gonna start with is enabling GraphQL. I'm gonna come up to the top and uncomment this link I'm gonna type in lowercase GraphQL. After that, we now can pull information from GraphQL. If I head down to the bottom of the page below export default index page, I'm gonna say export const, C-O-N-S-T, query equals, and then GraphQL. Now af after GraphQL, I'm gonna hit the double tick marks and drop it down two lines. From here, I'm gonna say the word query. And here, I'm gonna open and close with a curly bracket. And what is this query gonna be? Well, this query is gonna be the information that I have right here. I'm gonna copy and paste this all file, but I'm not gonna copy and paste the top curly brackets. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, make sure I have it all. I'll just hide that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this one File information. So I'm gonna say file information, use my camel case, and I'm gonna paste this right in. So I'm gonna drop it in, 
Did I have a space in there? Yeah, I did. So file information colon all file edges node ID base in pretty size. Now that we have this dropping in here, we should indent this. There we go. Nothing looks out of whack. We look pretty good here. We're looking pretty sharp. Now that we have this inside of our project, we now can pull from this GraphQL query. I'm gonna to head to the top part of this page. I'm gonna add one more element. I'm gonna add in this very top area, I'm gonna say import. I'm gonna bring in some content from React Bootstrap. So I'm gonna say from, and in this case, what we'll do is we're gonna say React Bootstrap. And I need to type this in first because what I can do is within the curly brackets, I can start typing in the word container and it's gonna show right up. So I'm just gonna drop in the container. Yes, it's not been used yet, no big deal. And in here, I will then just cut out the word hello world, save the word container, drop in an H1. Now we have hello world. In fact, let's say this Netlify, CMS, and Gatsby. Just so we're a little cleaner, we have our indentation going on. And what should pop up if I refresh the page is Netlify, CMS, and Gatsby. All the container does is allow me to move my design around and it has my breakpoints. That's all the container does. I've got more videos which you can watch which I'll put links in the description below. So after the H1, we now wanna write our query. So I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say the following. I'm gonna write curly bracket data, well not data transfer, how'd that one work out? Data, nope, oh you know I did hit the tab key. Data, one more. What is going on with the word data? Data, not data transfer, dot file, and then information. So we're gonna use the same word that I used down below. So data dot file information, and then we're gonna say edges. So if you think about it, I'm gonna follow this down here. Well, the edges and the node, there's multiple nodes. So we have to map this. So I'm gonna say edges, dot map, and in here, what am I gonna map? Well, we're gonna map a node. So I'm gonna put one more curly bracket, you'll see in a second what I mean by this, and we're then gonna say node, we're gonna map. I'm then gonna go outside of this, a yellow parenthesis area, and say equal sign, greater than symbol, space, and then one more parenthesis. There's like three you have to enter in. If you've got essentially three parentheses, where we've got one yellow, two yellow, whoops, one blue, and then the curly bracket, we're looking pretty good. So in here, what I'm gonna do, if I drop this down, something's not looking right because I don't have the right colors. Oh, I just have to drop down not both at the same time, but I have to drop down one. So what happens is you have one yellow at the very top, a closed yellow, a closed blue, and a curly bracket at the very end. What this is gonna do is this is gonna map the information that we had listed inside of GraphQL. So we've got two nodes, one Gatsby icon and one example.png. So what I'm gonna do is hide that again, and I first have to bring in a key. So to make sure it's working, I'm gonna say li, don't worry, I'm gonna bring a ul in later on. I'm gonna say li key equals, and we can say node, Dot ID. So we're following this trail down below where it's node ID. So we can't see it inside the LI, so I'm gonna repeat this twice. So the node ID is gonna be inside and outside of the LI, and if we do eventually put in a UL, just so we have it semantically, come on, keys, there we go. So now I have the UL LI, what I should get, oh, is a data reference. So yes, I failed to pull the word data in the index page. So at the very top, what I have to do is say curly brackets data. And now what happens is, oh, check it out. We have two long IDs that make no sense. That's totally fine. We know it's working because we have two sets of informational points. And if we look back in GraphQL, one is three C nine C four five, which matches the number here and matches the number right here. Now that we know it's pulling in information, we can change the ID to base and pretty size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the word ID to the word base. 
So I'm gonna say node.base, and now I have Gatsby icon and example.png. Pretty cool. I'm gonna then do a space, do a vertical line, and then say node dot pretty size and make sure I didn't do it incorrectly. Pretty size it is. And I'll put it right back up here and curly bracket as well. And now I'm pulling two sets of data, the Gatsby icon dot PNG, the actual file size and the example dot PNG 3.21. We know it can work. So if I want to pull a different file, so I've got a different picture sitting on a different screen, I'm going to go grab so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this desert photo. I'm gonna drag this desert photo in. And just like that, you'll see at the top that this desert photograph looks like that. It's amazing. Now shows up because I have three different nodes, Gatsby icon, example, and desert. And this is how you can pull data in through GraphQL into Gatsby.